just down the road from downtown New York City. We are at Harwood Arena in Union, New Jersey on the campus of Kane University. It's the Iverson Classic Blackout Showcase presented by Showtime Basketball. High School Hoops number four ranked Camden and number 13 Don Bosco Prep. Packed house here tonight. Welcome courtside. Brent Stover alongside former NBA star, sharpshooter, and McDonald's All-American J.R. Smith. You know all about being a star in New Jersey high school basketball. Tonight, it's more than just about two tremendous teams, but celebrating that legacy of the great basketball players that have come before these players in this state. Yeah, it's amazing to be a part of it. Um, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be a part of the tradition. Uh, obviously, we got seeing DJ play now and played against Dewan and my dad hearing stories about Milt. It's a, it's a rich tradition, and I'm very fortunate to be a part of it. Talking about the tradition of the Wagner family, three generations now, and the youngest is DJ Wagner. He is a star for this team. Number one recruit in the country for the Camden Panthers. This guy can do a little bit of everything DJ Wagner can. Yeah, 100%. I mean, he's... He, Everybody knows his dad has been such an uh, amazing scorer, but DJ is way more well-rounded, I think. He's a huge rebounder, huge defensive player. Uh, on top of that, he played football growing up, so he's got that edge to him and I, that I love to see, and uh, I think he's a special talent. And then Dylan Harper, just 16 years of age, is on the other side. He plays for Don Bosco Prep. He's a junior. He's ranked number five in his class. Seven times this year has scored 20 or more points in a game. Yeah, I mean, it is definitely beneficial to have a, a, a professional, you know, parent playing, a professional athlete playing uh, the sport that you love. And, I mean, I'm sure his dad has given so many tips and tools to, to get where he's at. But at the end of the day, you got to give it to him with hard work and dedication. He's got the body and the size of an NBA guy, so can't wait to see it. His mom played college basketball as well, and she is on the staff here at Don Bosco Prep. So it's number four Camden against number 13 Don Bosco. Talking about a legacy of state championships, several between both of these programs, and an opportunity to showcase themselves with this great partnership between Allen Iverson and Showtime Basketball. This tonight, the first live broadcast on Showtime of a high school basketball game. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, you know, to be a part of something like this or AI and the, how much of a legacy he's left on this tri-state area for what he's done and is still doing. And uh, it's, it's very, you know, admiring to see and uh, hopefully we can continue his going. We got stars, not just DJ Wagner and Dylan Harper, but we've got commits to other major Division One programs that'll be on display here tonight as well. You see the lineups for Camden. One player to watch is Billy Richmond. He's got offers from Kentucky, Louisville, Miami, and Villanova. Sion Medley, a point guard, has already committed to St. Louis University. Talked about Wagner, Brad, Sean Robinson, two stars as well. And for Don Bros Bosco, it's Isaiah Brown. Dylan Harper, fifth ranked prospect in next year's class. Evan Cabral, Noah Barnett, and Brady Lachlan. Number four, Camden. Number 13, Don Bosco. And once upon a time, as I mentioned, J.R. Smith before your phenomenal NBA career. You were one of these players in this situation. As a McDonald's All-American, you played for Dan Hurley, who's yeah. obviously got a top five team now at UConn this yes, year sir. at St. Benedict's. And you've talked about the impact that Dan Hurley had upon your career and your success well beyond your high school days. Yeah, 100%. Coach Hurley really taught me the game. Uh, he really made me realize it was way bigger than just driving, dunking, and just shooting threes. He really taught me the game to where a point to where I could take it to the next level. And I credit a lot of my success. He's by far one of the greatest coaches I've had. Shot there of Don Bosco head coach Kevin Averio. 28 seasons at the helm. They won state titles in 2017, 2018. Played for the state title in 2016. Almost three decades at the helm. One of the greats in America. In America, Malik Wayans. First year head man at Camden. Former Villanova star. Played nine years of professional basketball. Three in the NBA. Was on the staff last year at Villanova. Had the opportunity after Rick Brunson was the head coach here at Camden last year. And for a long time, Brunson led him to a state title a year ago. Took a job on the staff of the New York Knicks. And Malik Wayans jumped at the opportunity to come from 
Villanova to become the head coach here. As we are underway, number four Camden, number 13, Don Bosco Pratt. Opening touch, Camden, missed shot inside. Get the rebound, gathered, shot won't fall for DJ Wagner. His first attempt, it's out of bounds. Camden is so tall and big, man. This is, it's going to be a, a really tough game to keep them off the offensive and defensive rebounds. There's a look at the 28-year head man of Don Bosco, Kevin Avario. And he's a member in his own right of the New Jersey State Coaches Association Hall of Fame. And he was a great guard at Drew University just down the road. He's in their Hall of Fame as well. Ball dropped down underneath, shot wouldn't fall, partially blocked from behind. Camden remains with possession. New Jersey, one of those states that in high school basketball does not have a shot clock. That's certainly a factor. It's funny because coming in there, I was trying to think, do I know the high school rules anymore? <laughs> <laughs> been a while, huh? Yeah, it's definitely been a while. Driving the lane, shot wouldn't fall for Dylan Harper. His first shot of the game, nothing, nothing a minute deep. Ahead they come. Shaw, 7-2 senior, along with DJ Wagner, is headed to Kentucky next year. This is definitely not a team you want to give up easy baskets to. They're going to be all night driving to the paint. They're going to make them have to make jump shots. If turning the ball over like that is not going to cut it. Here's Brady Lockwood, good from outside. He's a sophomore. And Isaiah Brown. Brown pulls it from just inside the arc and drills it. And we are tied at two. How about this crowd? Packed house here on the campus of Kane University tonight. This is Jersey High School basketball. This is what it felt like when I was playing, when I used to go to so many different games, watch St. Anthony's play, watch St. Pat's games. This is what it's about. And you were a star at St. Benedict's. Follow-away jumper won't fall for Aaron Bradshaw. Here they come with Dylan Harper. On the wing of three, and he parries it. Evan Cabral, 6'3", senior. I like the kick ahead. Well, not selfish at all. Kick ahead, get it to, get the ball to your teammates, and let them make make plays. So both ends, the lead coming off. Maybe some early game jitters before both teams knocking down a couple of shots. And Don Bosco leads five two. The bounce all the way to the rim, uncontested. It's Isaiah Brown, the 5'11 junior. Quick timeout. Malik Wayans and Camden, they want to talk things over. Down 7-2 in the first. Can't give it up at the, at the paint. Tough. That's a tough position to let a guy drive to the top of the key all the way to the paint and lay the ball up. It's a good brush screen, but at the same time, can't just get beat like that. DJ's got to step in and guard his man as well as uh, the corner man has got to help. Isaiah Brown only 5'11", but he's got a big game according to head coach Kevin Avario. When he gets off early, that's the key for him, and he gets the early driving bucket. He's a very good on-ball defender. If he gets hot from three, look out. Creative in the lane, likes to use different angles, so a well-rounded guard in Isaiah Brown. D.J. Wagner out front, Billy Richmond misfires. Bradshaw had it stripped away off his rebound. Pulled out of there by Evan Cabral and now Isaiah Brown. You got to come up with those balls. Balls like that are off the rebound, you got to get those. Dylan Hart, he had it pinned by Aaron Bradshaw, 7-2 senior. Billy Richmond on his way in, maybe a little out of control, but a blocking foul on Cabral. I like the effort though to step in and take the charge and you know it, it, things like that can channel energy through your team. That's a great block. This kid's going to be good the next level. Yeah, Bradshaw top five recruit in his own right. He and Wagner both headed to Kentucky. Straight away three left it short. Sion Medley offensive rebound. Good work by Bradshaw again. Billy Richmond floats it up there. They're going to pack it out. Desir Haskins and now Billy Richmond. They're definitely going to struggle keeping him off the offensive rebound. 
You can tell with his size is going to be effective all night long. Cornelius Robinson misfires and a foul on the board over the back on Bradshaw. That's going to be the trouble as a big man, especially when you're oversized, not going over the back because you think you could just jump up and jump over somebody, especially as athletic as these guys are. Things like, things like that, the next level, they're going to teach you how to box out, how to get position and stuff like that. For him, a guy his size, he should easily get 20 rebounds. Nearing the midpoint opening quarter, Don Bosco ranked 13th in America, leading by five. Try to finish plus one. That was a pro move right there from a pro kid. Dylan Harper, the 6'6 junior, fifth ranked prospect in next year's class, getting interest from just about everybody. Duke is in the running just down the road. Rutgers, boy, they'd love to have him. His older brother, Ron Harper Jr., had a great college career at, uh, at Rutgers. I mean, it's, when you top five in that class, I'm pretty sure there's not too many schools that don't want you. <laughs> he had 29 against DePaul earlier this week. And then last night had 24 in their game. This is their third game for Don Bros Bosco this uh, week. Dylan Harper, two on one, the run out. Cabral goes up strong, pinned that against the glass. Great. Bradshaw with two highlight reel blocks early in this game. I love that. He's going for everything. He thinks he can block it all, and he wants it all. I like that. Harper floats out. Rhythm three. Got it. Brady Laughlin. You can tell they're a very well-coached team. They find, they find the teammates. They drive, kick, they make the extra pass, they take charges. This is definitely a, a fundamentally sound coach, too. So down 13-2, you got to love that. The shot's not falling, so DJ Wagner puts it on the deck and gets to the rim. Yeah, you got to love that about him. He's going to get to the lane. He's going to get to the, the free throw line, slow the clock down a little bit, especially when you're down 13-2, and it's a big game for him. He's going to have to do that all night long. Continuously attack, attack, attack. Get to the basket. Even if your shot's not falling, he's going to have to find out other ways to make an impact on the offensive end. One and two at the line. It's 13 3. 342 opening quarter. Dylan Harper kicks it corner. Evan Cabral, floater in the lane, left it short. Rebound. Billy Richmond. Richmond to the deck. Two players on the floor for Camden. And we're going the other way. Looked like the ref tripped him. <laughs> Ten point lead Don Bosco and I got to think this team playing the third game of the week but man for these kids that's not as big of a factor is it? No not at all I mean and I hate to be one of those guys but when we were playing the AU ball coming up we were playing five or six games in, in the day so they definitely can handle it. Camden lost in Miami Florida against Columbus High School on Wednesday night, their first loss of the season. So seven and one coming in. So they made the long trip back yesterday, watched film on Don Bosco last night and again today, and back at it. Bradshaw misfires on a three and rebounded by Harper. Harper from 15, fall away, and he drills it. That was a good move right there, kid. That's a good move right there. Being able to create your shot in high school is, is, is major, especially when you're one of those big time guys. You know the guy is top five or one of those, you know, guys with the name. You know they can get their own shot. But the confidence you can, you have in doing that in front of packed houses like this, is that's what it's about. Great pass. Bradshaw with a finish. Great pass by DJ. I like that little curl action they have and then make the big man step up and drop it off. Lachlan. Pull up left elbow. He parries it. Very fundamentally sound. One, two dribbles, pull up. That's the type of game that they're going to play all night. DJ Wagner off the bounce again, draws the contact of the drive. 217 in the first. Don Bosco out to a 17 5 advantage. I definitely didn't see the game starting off like this. I, was, I definitely thought, you know, having a couple guys like DJ and and uh, his teammates are going to Kentucky. I thought they were going to come out way, 
a little amped, and especially coming off after a loss. Bradshaw the finish there. You know, it's interesting. Malik Wayans talked to the head coach of Canada today. He said with Bradshaw, he's like a unicorn. Big guy over seven feet tall. Runs like a gazelle. Can shoot threes as well. Yeah, that's the new modern day big. That, and that's what everybody's looking for. So it's, it's going to be a, a great ride for him at Kentucky. And uh, I can't wait to see what Kyle does with these guys. Cam the Gat, Sion Medley, six foot senior guard on this team as well. He's committed to St. Louis University in the Atlantic 10. Foul on the way in. That'll be called on Bradshaw. I think that's his second right there. That's going to be tough. He comes out of the game. I hope they got another big body they can throw in there. So 17 7, six minutes in. Two now on Bradshaw. And Harper at the line. So Ron Harper, of course, senior. Five NBA titles once upon a time. Had a great career in the NBA. And then Ron Harper Jr., of course, at Rutgers, was phenomenal. And now playing in the NBA with Toronto. Yeah, I mean, that, his journey alone, I mean, obviously playing at Rutgers, being a Jersey kid, and now he's on the journey to continuously push and make the NBA. Uh, it's inspiring. You know, even some people feel as though, you know, players, kids have it have an easy road. But, you know, it's not always like that. And for him, I think it's a, not only a humbling experience, but this experience will make him grow into a better player. How much pressure did you feel as one of the best in the country in a game like this? Um, Fortunately, in the games like this, I didn't feel much pressure because I, I, I kind of knew where I stood amongst my peers and in the state of New Jersey. So it was, games like this was more of a statement. You know, everybody wants to hear what the hype is about. And you just want to go out there and show them. And uh, for me, it was games, games like this, you definitely get hyped up for it, especially when somebody else is a top ranked opponent. Harper looking like you on spot time on that one. Drills a three. He's got nine. Travel at this end. Don Bosco right now, 21-7, and being led again by Harper, who's got nine. So Ron Sr. in attendance, looks like he could still go a little bit. Yeah, we were just talking a little bit about a, uh, the, on that golf course to see who wants to take me down. I don't know if he got it in. I might have to move him up to the white tees. <laughs> exactly. And you're playing every day, we know, down, the, yes, down in Florida, right? Yes, sir. This firing that time from distance was Harper. Wagner off the bounce, follow a pretty move, left it short though. And a rebound by Cabral. Cabral been very active in this opening quarter. On the move, Isaiah Brown couldn't finish. Rebounded Cornelius Robinson. Sion Medley driving kick in rhythm. DJ Wagner off the mark. A little short today. He's a little short. I feel like he's going to find his rhythm. He might need that little pep talk from Pops mm -hmm. at halftime. <laughs> You mentioned earlier Dewan Wagner, who had a couple of years in the NBA, yeah. in college at Memphis, and then Milt Wagner, the, the grandfather, yes, sir. who obviously won a high school championship, a national championship, three Final Fours in college, and won an NBA title with the Lakers in 88. Such a talented family. Oh, how about that from DJ? Such a great move. Finish with the left hand, skip through the lane. This is such a treat to watch that as a as a player I am, well, a player I was, compared, and the person I am now, being a New Jersey kid, growing up and watching Wani, going to, I remember being in five, fifth, sixth grade, going to his games, and his, he's a sophomore, going crazy, averaging 30, 40 points. And now to be able to see his son and be here commentating, this, uh, it's a real treat for me. Yeah. Makes me feel a little bit old. I don't know about you. Too. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely makes me feel old, but you know what? It, is an alternative to that, so yeah. I'd rather get old. Yeah, man. So that'll end the quarter. 21-9, Don Bosco impressive. Jumps out to the 12-point edge after one. Twenty-one to nine after one here on the campus of King University. We'll take a break from the action for a message from NBA Hall of Famer Kevin Garnett on his weekly Showtime basketball show, KG Certified. Here to see Garnett. Oh, that go that ugly right there. Get your out of here. Why you always like big doors? Because we big. Oh, this is popping. It's cracking. 
certified will have a spirit. The certified is going to have a heartbeat to it. It's going to have little bits and pieces of my personality, things that make up who I am. One of the things that makes the NBA unique, we really celebrate the players who came before these generations. Top 75, that's real, dog. You and Kobe drafted that high. It changed the way people thought. You lost your quarterback. I was at a Gatorade shoot and shot. I go to Phil, why didn't you let Kobe get 100? He said, some record shouldn't be broke. Oh, wow. Basketball is universal. You still do your workout? You don't turn it off. Shoot that left hand hook, I don't give yeah. a fuck. Once I get you here, it's a guessing game. You're a walking bucket. Never a dull day, I'll tell you that. Welcome back to the campus of Keene University. Start the second. And uh, what a night it is. Packed house, and you're talking about the class of 2023, and there is DJ Wagner. Now, some would have him as the number one recruit. So yeah. maybe as low as five, but number two, according to this. I mean, it's always gonna be like that in high school basketball. You know, you can always go one, as long as you're not, I feel like in high school, as long as you're in that one through five category, it doesn't really matter. Absolutely. Well, this is the Iverson Classic Blackout Showcase presented by Showtime Basketball. This tonight, the first live broadcast of a high school basketball game, furthering the relationship between Showtime and the Iverson Classic. This is a major step forward. As we start the second, Dylan Harper's got nine already, and he's in double figures. They lead by 14. That's a great finish. Changes his body in midair, puts his back to, the, to his defender, and finishes with the left hand. That's a, that's a great move. I was going to say, Jay, our last spring, you and I had the opportunity there just outside of Memphis to do the Iverson Classic High School All-Star Game. Nice move there at this end. But first off, it's great to be back with you. But, man, how much fun was that? And th this relationship is just getting going. Pretty cool stuff. Oh, man, it's so much fun. So much fun. To see the young talent and from, from Memphis to Jersey, to see how much we actually put into this in our events is uh, it's really amazing. It's really great for the kids. It's really great for the communities. And it's, do it's doing a lot of really good things. And give your guy, Allen Iverson, a ton of credit, really giving back. And this is a cool thing that he uh, has staked his name to. Yes. I mean, AI, he, he's a loving person, one of the greatest teammates I've had. He wants to give the shirt off his back, and he will. And uh, having events like this, it just shows you what kind of impact he left on the tri-state area. But playing in Philly and being Jersey, being right next door, uh, even though we had the Nets growing up, uh, so many, so many people grew up AI fans. It was almost like the state of New Jersey wanted to be AI. Turnaround jumper in the lane, and that's a pretty move from the big man, Aaron Bradshaw. That's a great touch for a big man right there. That move right there is, hard to to do especially in a league i mean you're in the league and you see guys making that move on a consistent basis i, mean, I used to see al jefferson shoot that one-handed hook almost and, oh man this kid is on fire lachlan right there from outside he's got eight two threes in the layup okay that's it 26 13 don bosco has doubled him up number 13 in the country the ironman uh don bosco prep against number four in the nation, Camden. And this is kind of my first taste in New Jersey basketball, to be honest, you know. Oh, man, you don't know what you've been missing. <laughs> you got to stop giving up open shots. You can't, you can't give up a team like this open shots. We're gonna make, they're going to knock them down. Uh, as you can tell, this is what they practice. They practice their plays. They practice their spot shots. There's not too many people breaking down. If it is, it's pretty much just Dylan. And then everybody else is just, you know, following the system. So here's T.J. Wagner. And now Billy Richmond. Cornelius Robinson has committed to Albany. Robinson on the turnaround, too strong. Tapped around, Harper fighting for it with Richmond and a tie. For this kid to be 16 and a junior and playing against seniors who's going to college next year and, and have large names, and for the most part, I, I believe him and Isaiah are pretty much the only two guys on his team with a name, and he's playing like he's down 20. I love that, especially as a young kid with so much fight, and you, you can't teach that. No. You can't teach effort. No doubt. 
Coach DeVario talked about his court vision being just unbelievable. Three level score inside, mid range, outside. He's a tough matchup for anybody. And, and I said, well, if you're splitting hairs, there's that face up from Bradshaw. I'm telling you, he could be he could be really dangerous in the future. Cal, if Cal does him right, he's going to be amazing. In terms of Harper, though, in terms of if you are splitting hairs, it would be just that natural growth of getting older and, and finding your body. By the way, Lachlan, to your point, is on fire. He is on fire. You keep leaving him over if you want to. It's going to be a long night. of 15 Ironman here in the second. Sion Medley and now Wagner in the lane. That's a, that's a pro move though. That's a very, that's a pro move. Take away, they are everywhere. Don Bosco is, that's Mark Harazmi, a senior off the bench. Combo guard who plays great defense, saw it right there. That's a great defense, I mean. There's not much you can do when you, you, you know, you're closing out, there, but you got to get to him early. You can't let, you see, you see he's already made three. You got to get to him early. Three fouls on Bradshaw now. So that'll be a big story going forward for the big man, the seven footer inside for Camden. They're down by 14, and he's got three personals. Pull up Isaiah Brown off the mark into the hands of Medley. And here's Wagner, baseline reverse up through the hoop and out. A.J. Anderson in off the bench, grabs the rebound. He's struggling right now. He's going to find his game. I, I, I really believe that. It's, it's, you know, obviously, people are going to compare him to his dad off the, you know, off the rip, but I think he's, he's going to find his composure and it's going to come to him. Harper straight away downtown, rolls off and pulled down by Robinson. It's another open shot that they're just giving up. They're definitely going to have to start contesting shots better and, and closing out the guys. When you and I were in Memphis at that All-Star game, as you see on the replay, good effort. Uh, one thing I noticed about you, you're always getting shots up. Yeah. And at this point, I, you know, you're just having fun out there, but makes me think, man, if you're a young kid out here, no matter what level you're at, you've got to get your shots up every day, right? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So many, you know, everybody thinks you need so many special drills or special coach or somebody to do this and somebody to do that. All you need is a person to rebound to you and a person to pass for you. If you can get your managers from your team to pass and rebound for you, you're golden. I used to literally, when I was their age, my dad made me shoot 500 shots a day. That's incredible. And it was more makes than misses. It was, he, he made me make. You couldn't practice misses. That wasn't a lot. Good rebound. Stick back though, wouldn't go for Robinson. Kept alive by Medley. Corner three open, no. That one from Desir Haskins. Offensive rebound has been off the charts here on this, but, but they just cannot. You got to think at some point they're going to find this and then get back into it. Yeah, 100%. It's just a little on the basket right now for them. Everybody's, they're playing a little tense. They're, they're really uh, pressing right now. And once they really come into their own, I think after halftime, coming out of halftime, they'll be much more settled. Three forty-eight before halftime. Number 13, Don Bosco Prep. Number four, Camping. Two of the best in Jersey and two of the best in the country. Perhaps we lost it. On the run, Wagner. Two on one. Oh, oh. Haskins, big finish. I love those submissions. We gave it up, get the easy points, and let's start, let's start a little rhythm here. Let's get a little routine. Let's get some stops and get back in the game. Wagner in that loss to Columbus, their first of the year, had 32. Sam Brown off the dribble, lays it home. And that's the thing about Robinson going to the bench. I mean, they have no rim protectors. I mean, he's the only one in, in athletic and wants to go get every shot. So when you have three fouls in the first half in a high school basketball game with a big man, it's going to be hard. Here's a look at that fast break that you were talking about. Yeah, he's looking up the whole time, waiting for his man to, to close in and, and take the angle to the basket. And he, he waited just at the right time to make both of the defenders commit. Talking to Coach Wayans about D.J. Wagner today, he had so much more to say than just the talent. Talked about how he cares so much about his community, 
cares so much about his friends. I mean, he's a kid, <laughs> and his age is wise beyond his years in terms of just seeing the big picture of life, and that was a big thing that, that Coach wanted to hammer home. Yeah, I mean, he's he had the right tutelage, I'll tell you that. He's a, he's a lot like his dad. His dad is a very loyal guy, a very respected person. Uh, doesn't say a whole lot, but when he does speak, it speaks volumes, and, that's a, and that says a lot about your character. When people can sit there and listen to you and have, you know, the utmost respect because they know what type of person you are, that's the, that's the, the goal in life for any man. And with DJ, too, just coach talking about how super serious he is, always locked in, and then he loves to defend and compete, and that's not always the case with the Stars. You want to play offense, right? A hundred percent. You want to score, you want to show out, but you can see the grit and determination he has. I mean, he was a, he was a phenomenal football player on the defensive end <laughs> as well, so it makes sense. Harper with a three. And he continues to be on fire in the first half. Tom Posco leads by 13. 14 points for Harper so far. Wagner trying to answer. Shot partially blocked. Kept alive inside. Stick back wouldn't go for Robinson. Another offensive board. In rhythm, three counts, and they needed that from Seattle Medley. They needed that like an old man needs soft shoes right there. <laughs> They got to get that lid off the basket. So many offensive rebounds, though. They continuously attack the offensive rebound, draw and kick, kick it out, and then, it, you know, if you can continuously offensive rebound, you're going to get second chance points. You get The more second chance points you get, the better chance you get your team to win. 2 10 to play, second quarter. 34 24. Camden out rebounding. Don Bosco 9 0 in the second. On the run, Jalen Hornsby, pretty good up and under. Great move. Again, advancing the ball, getting easy buckets. When you're down and trailing a game like this, now it, it doesn't look eight points isn't so bad. And when you start off 13 and two and runs like that, it's tough to come back. DeVario needs timeout, so they get the bucket, a little run for Camden, then put on that full court pressure. I love it. That's now that's the high school basketball I know in New Jersey. Full court press. Nobody, very few people play zone. They just go at it. Especially with Camden, they got the length, they got the physicality. When you can get somebody to pick their dribble up like that in the backcourt, that's that's always an advantage. So with a timeout, 151 of the second, Don Bosco leading by eight. You know, we, we talk about the stars and the headliners, obviously, are Dylan Harper and, and DJ Wagner, but you know, just speaking to, there are, there are levels to everything, right? And, and a guy like you that had a tremendous NBA career, like even for guys like that, it's not guaranteed. No. Right? I mean, think about Ron Harper Jr. and, 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 and the job he did with, with under that man, Steve Peichel had a, Ron Harper Jr. had a tremendous college career at Rutgers, yet here he is bouncing up and down between the G League and the NBA in his rookie yeah. season. You know what I mean? You look at a guy like that and you're like, oh, he's going to have a 10 year tremendous NBA career. No, I mean, it's a different level. No, it's definitely a different level. And now it's like, you know, when I was coming up, it was more Americanized. Now it's the international polls open up so dramatically, especially in the NBA. I mean, you got the last five MVPs, I believe, were from international players. You know, so when you get that, when you open up that pool as well as these guys, it's, it's going to be tough. It's, it, the thing about it is, if you won't quit, you don't give up, you give the perseverance, you continuously give your effort and love to the game, you never fail. Even if you don't play in the NBA, you still didn't fail. And so many people play overseas and have tremendous careers. And people, a lot of us athletes, we only look at it at one side. If I didn't make the NBA, I failed. No, you didn't fail. It's just that, that whatever coach, scout, or whatever, it just wasn't in your cards. Did you can go overseas and have a great career? Well, to that point, Malik Wayans, the Camden head coach, is hard to cross the ball, but for Wayans, he was a McDonald's All-American, a Parade All-American, the Camden head coach. Yeah. He played nine years pro, only three in the NBA, but just kind of found his way around the world and obviously did very well for himself. 100%. It's funny because I grew up playing with him. I grew up playing high school basketball against him, playing AU basketball hmm. against him. And now to see where he's at now, especially at Camden, it, it all comes full circle. It's, it's, it's great. It's great for the game. It's great for the kids. No. Bachman, you got it. Corner oh, three yeah. again. Somebody got to do something. Somebody got to do something. 37-26. <laughs> a 
Hey, it wasn't long ago you were lighting it up like that down at the garden just a few <laughs> miles away, huh? Yeah, not too long ago. Oh, good move. That is, and the finish from Cornelius Robinson. I really like that hop through. That was a good move. They got to learn how to stop the bleeding with these threes, though. This kid is killing it. Robinson committed to Albany. He's a great defender, really sets the tone for the team, but he's got obviously offensive skill as well. You need guys like that. Guys are going to get into the ball, pressure the ball, disrupt the, disrupt the offense, as well as a guy like DJ playing the two, doing the exact same thing. And, oh, no. Lachlan short that time. I was going to say, oh, man. Harper skies for the rebound. Harper wants to go. Got a man on the wing, William Mensa. A lot of contact, no call, and the finish by Harper. This kid is good. He's putting on a show right now, all around. Offensively passing the ball, uh, scoring the ball, obviously offensive rebounds. He's really coming out here to play, set a statement. He's got 16. His mom, Maria Harper, is on the bench, one of the assistants for Don Bosco. Corner three, and the answer for Desir Haskins. That's a great find in the corner. Drive and kick it, get it, get it open shot. All right, so Camden makes a run at the end. The Stars have come to play in New Jersey tonight on Showtime Basketball. Top 15 matchup across the country. Number four, Camden. Number 13, Don Bosco. 39-31 at the break. I grew up as a guy named Lee Harmis used to call me Young Magic because I was a young kid. I used to play with the older kids, and I, I was able to pass at a young age. I had to feel for the game. Yeah. We had Chauncey Billups. We had Jason Kidd come on the show, and they all idolized you just like we did. How does it feel for so many players to come up and so many legends of the game to say, well, it started with Magic Johnson mm -hmm. in my career? Well, it feels great. I mean, I just tried to play the game the right way, man. And I love passing that basketball, man, and having it in my hands. I love controlling the action, right? And so... Uh, being a leader of every team I played on, all, only thing I wanted to do, man, was win. That's it. That's, that's, I just wanted to win. And so uh, nothing in my life has changed. I still want to win today. Mm -hmm. And I still, I'm still the point guard, but I'm just the point guard in my company instead of out on the court. But I would say this. I love the game. Yes. So I played all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think that you and I, uh, UCLA, you know, we had so many Ooh, great we moments. we going to get to the way you used to do us at UCLA, <laughs> We're going to get to that a little later. <laughs> but I think those guys are great. And that's that why Paul? I love J. Kidd. I love all of them. <laughs> sound like Paul. I know. I know. Yeah. He know, too. <laughs> oh, man. He know. Paul used to shoot them jumpers. <laughs> so, but, you know, it's, it's all about the love. Nah. You know, we and so, so, you know, when you love the game and and that becomes contagious to guys coming behind me, that's a blessing. And that means that uh, they respect the way I played. And then look what happened to those two guys you, that you talked about. Mm -hmm. You know, they became champions and uh, guys who made their teammates better. What I loved about both of you, you had you excelled at the roles that you both had. Starting our own role. Yeah because San Antonio wouldn't have been able to do what they did without you. Yeah, thank See, you. what thank you did, you. what you did. You. And you, you bought that swag and that, that street, and then you were killing them with that jumper. <laughs> Ooh, man. Jack wasn't playing, boy. And then when he got rolling, he gave you that look. Yeah. Like, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm over here blushing like a two-year-old. Right <laughs> and then Matt just lock you all up and stuff, block your shot and look at you. Like, come on, yeah, I got you. Yeah. I'm, I'm locking you down. <laughs> and so, you know, when you all, we all just do what we do, right? And so, and then when kids see that, they say, wow, okay, I want to be like him. Mm -hmm. and, and young people are watching you too now saying, Wow, especially, I hate to bring color in, but it's true. Black men now know they can do what you're doing.
Well, that was a preview of the upcoming Magic Johnson All the Smoke episode. The full episode drops Thursday, January 12th. High school hoops on a Friday night. Showtime basketball. Number four, Camden, trailing number 13, Don Bosco, here in New Jersey, 39 to 31. Brent Silver alongside J.R. Smith. You certainly are a man of the people. I mean, these really are your parts. How much fun is this? This is amazing, man. To be able to get this kind of welcome and coming home, uh, I love it. It's one of the reasons why, you know, you do the things you do so you can represent the people back home. Yeah, very cool. So it's an eight-point lead, but Cam in there with a nice little run to make things interesting going into the second half. Yeah, I mean, driving and kicking, get to the free throw line, slowing, trying to put points on the board when the clock is not running, especially when you're down. Uh, that's I think that's a uh, pivotal point for them right now, but changing it at halftime, they got to get the, the lid off the basket. Hopefully, they go to, well, obviously, they're going a different way, so hopefully, they get some going. So, Aaron Bradshaw got in a little bit of foul trouble, but before he did, the seven footer had a huge impact on the first part of this game. Yeah, he's got a great touch around the basket. His shot even looks good on his face up jumpers. Um, he's been a tremendous on the, on the blocks and the defensive end. And then that's what you need. You need guys like that. And you know, it really hurts when he's in foul trouble with three fouls in the first half. Man, so unfortunately, before the fouls, he had those two highlight reel uh, block shots. So on the other side, you got Dylan Harper. Ron Harper Jr.'s younger brother, and of course Ron Harper Sr.'s son. He's got 16 in the first half. I mean, Dylan is playing out of his mind. He played actually on my on my AU team on the legacy slash players. So it's a really treat for me to get to actually watch him up close and personal and him actually having a good game. Be so young, be a 16-year-old junior playing against really good seniors, obviously guys with names. That's hard to do. People don't really understand how hard that is to do. I remember playing against the Wall Dang, Charlie Bill and the Waver and those dudes when I was young. And it was, I felt like it was almost impossible. Fortunately, we won, but I mean, that's how he feels. Don Bosco leads 39 to 31. Let's take a look at these first half stats. What pops off the page in your mind, JR? I mean, for one, the rebounds. I mean, to have 21 to nine in the rebound category and be on the losing side of that is, is really impressive. I would like to see the threes. See, obviously, Don Bosco is shooting the heck out of the ball from the three-point line. And uh, it's hard when Camden just not finishing at the basket. They're getting a lot to the basket. They're not taking as many threes. But when you get to the basket, you got to finish. Don Bosco coming in 9-0, 4-0 in their conference. And for Camden, just suffered their first loss of the season on Wednesday, but they are 7-1. Halftime rolls on, 39-31. We take a quick break for a look at Showtime Basketball's documentary, Be Now, inside the 2022 Iverson Classic. Always us, never them. Always us, never them. Don't stop right here, man. It's whatever y'all want. Know y'all got dreams. Know y'all want to do something with your life. Go ahead and get it, man. It's your world. Everybody else just visit. Experience is the best teacher. And when you have guys that's been to college, that's won to college, that's been to the NBA, that's won in the NBA, this is the direction that these kids are trying to go. The best thing we can do is give them information and give them game so they don't make the same mistakes we made. Tonight, we officially invite you to the Iverson Classic All America game. Yeah. why a lot of people are here because he's inspiring a lot of people and for him to be doing what he's doing with one arm everybody should applaud him and support him This is the first day, man, we want y'all to get something out of it. This is don't be here going through the motion. We want y'all to get better, because nine out of 10 times when you're going through the motion half-assing, that's when you get hurt. This game could only be what we want it to be. 
if y'all are involved, right? I gotta do a little bit better myself, adjust to it. They're on my ass. They want me to be better today, but I'm, that's what I want. I mean, it's the best feeling ever. You know, you're out here with the best, competing with the best, in front of the best. The scrimmage going good. Everybody competing, we're getting after it. We got some people talking trash. Uh, a lot of sweat out here, so we're just having fun right now. We have a lot of pros that come about this game. I think a lot of kids need to understand that when you come here, show up and show out, it's eyes everywhere. You show up here, it's gonna be coaches, gonna be NBA scouts, it's gonna be everybody that you need to know or see, they're gonna be at these games. So if you wanna start your career off the right way and see the right people and learn the right things, this is the place to be. Back inside Harwood Arena on the campus of Kane University, Union, New Jersey. Don Bosco leading 31-30, 39-31 Showtime basketball. And three men, including my partner, J.R. Smith, being awarded with the Bob Hurley Legacy Award. He and Tim Thomas and Dewan Wagner. More to come here at halftime. If Curry win another chip. Where you put him? And get finals MVP. Where you put him? Is he, is he top 10 right now? Hell gotta yeah. Gotta be, right? Okay. Man, as long as on that page. Listen, I heard Will Chamberlain say this to Michael Jordan. No, I don't Jordan. got him top 10 right now. You don't have him top not, 10? Not right now, not right now. Triple. I got him top not 10. Man changes the game and where you shoot who, the ball from. Who you got at that's the magic? First. What point Secondly, no, 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 he, does no, no. It, he does it on a consistent basis. That's Every point. guard that's under yeah. what? Six foot think they're I mean, Steph Curry I still pay respect to the older players of their generation, though. Huh? I still respect the older players. But, but, but besides I'm magic, what other point guards you putting in the top 10? I'm talking about no, changing up the game. No, top 10 I'm all time. Changing all up time. the game. All time. I'm not, I'm not talking about, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. it's only one top 10. <laughs> no, I mean, everybody got their opinion. So he's you just know, not, in, your, he's got, not in yours my, yet. I still respect the older guys in that era, like a Russell and a Will. You know, that's a lot of disrespect to them. No, they you still know, in the top ten. Help. They can't. I got Will. I got them two in the top ten. When you change the game, I heard when you change the game. Don't bro, ask me about the that. The pickup point on that <laughs> is where he get past half. He definitely changed the. That's guy. what I'm trying to say, Lord. The pickup point, Lord. You not guard them. <laughs> Y'all both not guard the guards. If you really tired, what you do? Run back half court, wait for him. You can't do that no, with him. I used to wait under the three point line Lord, when he first came in the game. I'm trying to tell his pickup point is right when he come across half. Lord, you gotta zigzag him. You gotta go to bed at night for that man, dog. This ain't no, man. no here, Lord. We 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 gracious to be in the MJ uh, uh, era. We've been gracious to be in the Kobe era. <laughs> Even Shaq, Shaq changed the game. Broke a rim, ripped the backboard. Man, come on, man, man. This man has changed the game. He's made every guard think they got range. He got every guard <laughs> thinking they got range. There's only one guard that changed the game bigger than him. That's that. AI. I ain't, I ain't. You ain't so? I ain't got nothing against all of that. He is. He's not I top ten. He top fifteen. Wait, wait till, wait till his sister's he done. He still got a resume. He writing. Is he top fifteen now? I don't know where he at. Shut right the front now. door, Pete. I don't P. know where he at. Right. <laughs> oh, certified smoke. A new crossover show between all the smoke with Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson and KG certified with Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce. Watch. The four NBA champions have a fierce debate on Stephen Curry's all-time rank. All right, second half begins and a quick start once again. Don Bosco, but they couldn't finish underneath with Noah Barnett. 39-31, it was Camden who had the momentum into halftime, looking to get it going again here in the third and a foul, and that is what DJ Wagner does, getting to the rim. Yes, attacking the basket is where, what he does best. Getting downhill, creating for his teammates, getting to the free throw line, that's where he's at his best at. Brent Stone alongside J.R. Smith on the campus of Kane University, Harwood Arena in Union, New Jersey at the break. Three former greats from this area awarded with the Bob Hurley Legacy Award. Tim Thomas, who played at Patterson Catholic. Dewan Wagner, of course, his son at the free throw line. He played at Camden. And you, J.R. Smith, St. Benedict's. Congratulations on the award. Pretty cool stuff, huh? Appreciate it. It's, it's, it's hard to put into words, you know, when you get in, when you're in a room with guys like that and they're acknowledging you with their, with their legacy and what they've done. Um, especially in high school basketball in New Jersey, Tim Thomas was an amazing, amazing talent out of, 
a Patterson Catholic, and then obviously Wani was Wani. When I was growing up watching these dudes, it was a, literally a show every night. They, they put on every night, and they made me want to be better. They made me want to be great. And uh, unfortunately, I played, my, my cousin played against Wani, and I was uh, in eighth grade and watched him give my cousin and his team the business. And it was just, it was it was funny to watch, obviously as a kid, to see your cousins and them go out there and get bust. But like the way he was playing was amazing. At such a young age, so talented, so gifted, so strong. And more than anything, he was so strong mentally even then, you know? You know, it, it's unfortunate because he played the one year in Memphis and was a star and then yeah. was destined for a tremendous NBA career, but a debilitating, you know, health issues kind of cut his career short, which is disappointing. Yeah, it's very disappointing because he was, he was literally on the brink of greatness. I mean, he averaged, I think, 21 his rookie year, and it was just easy to him, so easy to him. And Bill Wagner, of course, the, the grandfather of, of DJ here. And we talked about the three final fours, the national title at Louisville, won an NBA championship with the Lakers. And, uh, Man, I can remember seeing Milk play, and I believe this, in the 88-89 season, I grew up in South Dakota, for the Rapid City Thrillers. Really? That's that's right. Milk the, Wagner was on my team. <laughs> well, the CBA, when you're a kid, man, the CBA, and that was a great league. Yeah, I mean, it's, 100%. My dad rants and raves about the CBA all the time. Uh, so here we are at 41-34, early moments, third quarter. Fourth foul there on Noah Barnett. So he's got to go to the bench for Don Bosco. They raced out to a big lead. Camden cut it to eight at the break, and now they have two, two more off that deficit here in the early moments of the third. And DJ Wagner slicing through for the bucket. Forty-one thirty-six. 90 seconds into the second half. See what Dylan Harper has for an answer. Harper that, slicing his own way through, but couldn't finish. That's a really good move. That's a really good move. The creativity these kids have is outrageous. Billy Richmond misfired. Got his own rebound and counted it for Richmond. Follow your own rebound, finish it with the end one. That's how you get your crowd to it. Three-point ball game. They back in it. Whatever you, he said at halftime, it works. You knew it was coming. I definitely. It only, you know, sometimes it just takes you to get a minute to get settled into the environment, get used to the hoops, getting the up and down visually. And it, some guys just comes out and, and you know happens going faster. What a night! This is the first live broadcast of a high school basketball game. Showtime basketball, the relationship between Showtime and the Iverson Classic, and tonight a big step forward, and we are honored to get to be a small part of that. Dylan misfires inside, rebounded by Aaron Bradshaw. They're on the move. In rhythm, Wagner, not this time. Oh, Bradshaw, back up and in. This guy is special. I'm telling that offensive rebound, he's a difference maker. He is a difference maker. DeVario, the 28-year head coach of Don Bosco, needs timeout. Ted locked at 41. I would like to see him protect the ball a little more on his rebounds, but for the most part, I mean, it's, that kid is good. He he is really good. He's good around the basket. He's good, great touch. He he's not afraid to try to make a play. You got you got to want that on your team. Great body control. Mm. Number four, Camden, and number 13, Don Bosco. I love Jersey basketball. Just the crowd, the the whole environment. This is what it's about. This is where we come from. This is what it's all about, man. Seeing Camden fans when I was coming up in sixth, seventh grade, watching Ronnie play road games, home games. It was literally buses of people just to go watch him play on the road. It was amazing. I mean, these are your people. You're in your environment. Like, there was a great game before this, and I turn around, and you're just sitting in the crowd with meeting new friends. <laughs> well, a lot of my, a lot of them are my childhood <laughs> friends, you know, uh, especially in the yeah, North East Side and West Side playing against each other. That's a hometown rivalry for us being in St. Benedict's. Um, so I know a lot of the, you know, guys who went to those schools, and whenever, I remember playing against them when I was at Benedict's. 
Corner three, tough shot, wouldn't fall for Evan Cabral. Sian Medley on the run. Sian Medley to the rim. Walk through the lane, you can't just bring the ball up and walk through the lane and lay it up like that. Somebody's got to meet him with some contact. He's got 11. Former future point guard for St. Louis University. Their first lead since it was 2 nothing. Camden has got the edge, 43-41. Wagner spun out. Bradshaw back up, lost it on the way up. And good job tight roping the baseline by Dylan Harper. Here's Isaiah Brown down the baseline. These kids are athletic. Blocked by Richmond. Finish strong. Wagner had it blocked. They're going end to end. High level ball, top 15 matchup in the country here tonight. You'd love to see it. That's the, that's the type of style you want to see up and down, physical contact, guys playing hard, diving on the floor for loose balls. That's, that's what fans want to see. Jay Wagner headed to Kentucky. 21 on Wednesday in their first loss of the year on the road in Miami, Florida against Columbus High School. Which Wayne said they, they just didn't show. We just, first time all year that they had a true, true, tough, tough road game and, and we weren't ourselves, according to him. Didn't respond well. well. They responded well to adversity tonight. Fall fell behind big early. But this program with 12 state titles, including last year, has come alive late in the first half and early here in the second half. They lead by four. What kind of an answer does Don Bosco have? And Dylan Harper, who's got it here. They definitely didn't want him shooting the ball. I know that. <laughs> oh, Harper man. from way out. Too strong. Lachlan had it. Reset underneath. Great feet. Cabral gets fouled. His vision, like his coach said, his vision. He's got great vision to be able to handle the ball at his size, being 6'5". And a lot of that for, for us as, as guards, especially big guards, when you're coming up in high school, this is where you really learn how to handle the ball. You, you, you bring the ball up the court, you set, people set pick and rolls for you. You get to learn how to come off pick and rolls. You really get to learn how to play when you, especially if you're that guy. If you have that type of talent and that type of skill, you really get to see it on display. Midway third quarter. Again, for fans unfamiliar in several states, including New Jersey, no shot clock. But I don't know tonight if, uh, if a shot clock really would have mattered all that. I, I don't think so either. Now, this is high level ball as advertised. Sion Medley working against Isaiah Brown. I don't think I would have needed a shot clock. That's four. That's four fouls. So that's four. What do you do here? I mean, 347 in the third. You got the lead right now, so you got to pull him. You got to pull him. And it's a eight, I mean, eight minute quarters. You bring him into the top of the maybe the top of the four, depending on how it's looking. He's got 10 points, but four fouls. Bradshaw. So he's on the bench again. He's going to join DJ Wagner at Kentucky next year. Five of eight here in the third for Camden. 0 for 8 for Don Bosco. Harper trying to change it, couldn't finish though. All the momentum for Camden. 0 for 9 now for Don Bosco in the third. And stripped on the way. Good defense there to get a hand in by Isaiah Brown. That was a great hand on the ball to save that because it could either have been a layup or a wide open three in the corner. So now the Ironman got to stave off this momentum as uh, Cornelius Robinson gets a seat for Camden. If I was Don Bosco, I would attack Camden's paint every single time at this point. Their big man is out. They got four fouls. They're getting anything they want in the middle of the lane. That's how they drive and kick and get open shots like that. Lachlan in rhythm, left it short, ripped out of the air by Wagner. Here comes DJ. He's feeling it right now. Draws the double, kicks it out. This is high level stuff, and there's an offensive foul. A fundamentally sound team, setting charges. He's really ready to go on the other end, get wide open shots, and make shots. That's what they do. When a team like that is playing against a team like Camden, who just at, depends on their athletic ability and just guys that go one on one, this is what they hang their hat on. It's hard to beat teams in environments like this who take charges, make the extra pass, and do the right in the small plays. Under three to play in the third. 
Face up. Harper drills it. They needed that in the worst way. Definitely did. The face up, I mean, he shot it with so much confidence. It's almost like he knew he was going to shoot it before he got the ball. And I love to see that because I'm a shooter. Yeah, you are. Oh, yeah. One of the greats <laughs> in NBA history from distance. Corner, rhythm, side of the glass that time. Back up. Does it, does it count? They are counting. Counting it. That's a good bucket. That's a good bucket. DJ Wagner, though, he is much more facilitated than I thought. Hearing about him score 30s and high 20s and stuff like that, I'm thinking, okay, coming, he's going to score a bunch of points. He's more of a facilitator than I've, than I've seen. You got to give him credit to be able to handle the pressure with scoring as well as getting your teammates involved. That's, I mean, that's that's a that's a class act type of player. Mm. Billy Richmond. He's gotten offers from schools the likes of Kentucky and Louisville. And it's because of plays like that. Kentucky, Louisville, Miami, Villanova, all the top programs want him. You need guys like that to do the dirty work. Can Harper answer once again, takes it to the rim and finishes. This kid is playing with something to prove. I don't know who he got to prove it to, but he's trying to prove that point now. They started 0 for 9 in the quarter, so he takes matters into his own hands. It's two in a row, but the answer from DJ Wagner, the two superstars going back and forth. This is what we came to see. This is what we came to see right here. Are you not entertained? Isaiah Brown tried to drop it off, stolen away by Richmond. They've got numbers. Jalen Hornsby, what a feed. Haskins couldn't handle it out of bounds. I think they got to finish those. In, in, in positions like that, you got two, three on ones, you got to finish that. That's a good bucket right yeah. there from DJ Wagner. I feel like he got stuck a little bit and just said, you know what, I'm going to let it go from right here. Here's Richmond. And now Wagner. And kind of for the first time tonight, we're going to pump the brakes, at least momentarily. Wagner wants to go on Cabral. Oh, yeah. Step back, deep Ooh. one short. That would have brought the house down. Yes, it would have. So in Jersey, when Wani was playing, his dad, they had a little thing that all the fans do. And you hear it now with DJ. They go, ooh, every time he shoots the ball. And then as soon as it goes through, they go crazy. It was really an advantage for Camden, for sure. <laughs> What's it like for those of us who are never going to know to play for the Knicks, play at the Garden, and bring down the house with a massive three? Oh, man. Very few feelings like it. I mean, playing, playing in New York on Broadway, it, you really felt like you were a Broadway show. And uh, to bring it down and to hear the crowd, the receptions we would get, especially when we were winning, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Very few feelings. Harper, what a move. He is taking this game, putting this team on his back right now. Oh, my goodness. 25, left hand. He is lefty, but that right there is a very, very tough move. Between the legs, get to the lane, gather on with two bodies and finish, and one. That's tough. 16? That's tough. You mentioned he's got 25 in the game. If he's five, I want to know who the other four is. <laughs> <laughs> I got to see who the other four is in his class because he's making this look easy. Oh, man. You got 26? He got 26. With a whole quarter to go. And again, this is their third game of the week. He had 24 in a win last night. And on Tuesday, they beat DePaul, and he had 29. He, he coming to put up numbers. His eighth game tonight with 20 or more points in the season. Oh, see, on Medley, this guy, this Medley is a player, huh? Yeah, I, I like him. He's very, he's in, he's always in attack mode. He gets into the ball, tries to disrupt something, and then he's, he's not scared. You need, a, you need a point guard like that who's not fearful to make mistakes, want to want to play aggressive, and uh, for a guy like DJ and um, Robinson, you need a point guard like that who's going to get into the ball and disrupt it. I mentioned he'll be playing in the Atlantic 10 next year. Point guard for St. Louis University. Knocks it home. Good ball game. Final 35 seconds to the third. Camden ranked fourth in the country. Don Bosco ranked 13th. It's a three-point lead for the Panthers of Camden.
Mark Harassi. Senior off the bench. Evan Cabral, 15 seconds, yeah. Ooh. You're right, he's everywhere, Medley this is. Kid is. everywhere, on the ground and everything. I love this. 13.9 on the clock, King dead by four. They're in a bonus? Yes. 12 tonight for Medley. Third foul on him. And he might have taken more of the damage. He's going to have a chat with the official. Harper at the line. See, I don't, I don't land that, right? No. You're okay with that? 100%. And the official doing the right thing, saying here's what it was. Yeah, I love that. Give him some feedback. You know, you don't have to get into a full-blown confrontation with a guy. Give him some feedback, what I could have did better, what did you see, and, you know, move on to the next play. Harper couldn't finish that free throw. He's got 26 of their 49. Final eight seconds, 54 to 49. DJ Wagner through the lane, finishes with two seconds. Tough bucket. Good bucket, DJ. So Don Bosco did have a point taken off because they decided one of the recent buckets was only a two. Bottom line, end of three, 56-49. What a game, what a way to finish. Well, Paolo Bancaro, an Iverson Classic alum and frontrunner for 2023 NBA Rookie of the Year, joined Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson on all the smoke this past summer. We first met at the AI game. Did AI give you any advice that, that you hold on to? Just playing in that game was was bigger than most people may think just because we didn't have, we didn't get to play in the other um, all no American games. games. Yeah. And AI was the only one who, who did it for us, even though I felt like we could have. You know, I feel like, you know, McDonald's and we could have had a game, but um, none, of them, none of them had one except AI. So we all, I mean, that was a good one. Everybody, like, everybody pulled up. Yeah. So we was competing, going at it. Yeah, he gave me some advice. He was just like, you know, you got everything. He was like, but just be more efficient, you know, with your dribbles, with your moves. He was like, you ain't got to play with it. Just get to your mm. spots and be efficient. And he was a 6'1 guard, and he's saying that. Doing so that, yeah. If he can get to his spots and be efficient in, you know, keep it simple, you know, there ain't no reason why I shouldn't. So I remember when I first heard that y'all was having the game, I texted like 10 different guys, <laughs> sent them the flyer. It was like, yo, we got to all go. Yeah, it was dope. You know, because we, we, we didn't get to play against each other, so. Paolo Bancaro discussing the significance of the Iverson Classic. We are in Union, New Jersey tonight. Good ball game as we start the fourth. Good crowd. Good place to be, just down the road from New York City. This is amazing. This is a great place to be. Just to watch these kids, to watch this young man right here, it's a, it's a very special, very special moment. Celebrating the legacy of New Jersey basketball tonight. First live broadcast of a high school basketball game on Showtime Basketball, which you just saw that last piece. Just making huge inroads and continuing to do very cool stuff on the platform. And this relationship between Allen Iverson, the Iverson Classic, and Showtime. And this is tonight just another step in this relationship, and uh, it's only going to grow from here. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what other games and what other talents coming through. It's going to be a really good. Uh, it's going to be a really good experience for, for Ty to come. The, the turnout we got this year already has been amazing. The fans have been great. The players have been playing and their hearts out, and that's really all you can ask. You and I were in Memphis last spring. You saw Coach Deveria, by the way. He's he's getting a little hot under the collar, taking the jacket off. But yeah, you and I had a great time in Memphis, which with. And now it's cool seeing some of these guys just star in college. I was watching Casey Wallace is a good example oh, yeah. um, at Kentucky now. But you and I, I mean, we were on the, we got the opportunity to see him before he headed to Lexington last spring. Yeah, I get it. I, I've been watching Jet a lot this year, and he's been playing out of his mind over in Michigan. There. Michigan was that. It's really that's a, that's a great watch too. Yeah, you to see him and his brother with his dad to play. Oh. There, there's key update George at Baylor as well. He's not too good to start like his freshman year. Getting out to it, getting out there in the open. <laughs> 60 to 49. 720 to play the game. Isaiah Brown, pull up, no. And now nothing falling. This thing has completely changed in terms of momentum. I'm convinced that run is stiff on this side. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Sion Medley working against Brown. Good matchup all night. 
And that T.J. Wagner going to work against Evan Cabral. One minute into the fourth. Camden up 28 to eight here in the second half. A takeaway, but then another turnover back to Medley. Pull up, foot on the line. Shot goes down to Sear Haskins. Big play right there. Big play. Huge steal. Make the right pass. Took it. Took a shot that, that could have went either way because the coaches in that situation normally want to certify a bucket, get the layup. But nowadays, they, everybody's shooting threes. So that's a good shot. So there's been a 28 point swing since the largest lead of the game for Tom Pasco. But Harper chops into that with a massive three and one they really desperately needed. Hey, Camden, in case you didn't know, the guy number two on the other team, he's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. He's got 29, but here was the dunk moments ago. Camden out in transition. Yeah, you love that. You want to see the kids get out there and ha have a little bit of fun and, and, and get hyped and you know play for one another. Plays like that is how you really get that done. But this kid, he don't. His respect level for his teammates and himself is way higher than right now than this for Peter's Gardner. I'm telling you that right now. He is going in. He, and you know what? He's got that that thing that not everybody has. And, I, you know, I work with Wally Zerbiak a ton at CBS Sports, and you had the same where it's just it's amnesia. Like, you can miss your first 10 shots. Doesn't matter. Next one's going in. 100%. And that's that. The moment's never too big. Never. No. You got to have that belief. You put too much time and energy into this and your craft to go out there and, and be gunshot. You know, for me, I was always, you know, I worked so hard at this. No matter how many shots I shoot, whether I air ball or miss, I can go 0 for 20. 21, 22, 23, they're going in. Remarkable crowd here tonight. Packed house. Harwood Arena, the campus of Kane University in Union, New Jersey. A couple of top 15 teams in the country. In terms of just New Jersey, Camden ranked number two, Don Bosco number three. Harper's got 29, Medley has 16, but a huge swing here in the second half. At the break, Don Bosco led by eight, and here early in the fourth, they now trail by 11. And there's a face-up shot for Bradshaw playing with the four fouls. I mean, they're going to need him to stay on the court. Bradshaw has to stay on the court for this team to seal his game off. Up by 13 now is Camden. Harper working on Wagner. Fall away. Rolls around and out. And rebounded by Bradshaw. So now you've got the 13-point lead and Bradshaw back in the on the floor. So if you're Don Bosco, certainly up against it here with 5.52 remaining. What I like is how DJ switched over and took uh, Dylan. I, I like that. I like that matchup. He's a bigger guard, loves to play defense. Thinks he's going, somebody's hot. Let me shut him down. I like that. Bradshaw back in down on Noah Barnett and buries it. This kid is going to be good. He could be a problem. If he put some weight on, you know, get stronger, he could be, he could be really, really good. We haven't seen it tonight, but he's got a great three point shot as well. His coach called him a unicorn. Oh, knifing into the defense. And one, Dylan Harper. That's it. This kid makes tough bucket after tough bucket. His season high is 33. He's at 31 now. I think he's going for the gusto. <laughs> tough to defend, huh? I mean, so shifty. But anytime you can just stop on a dime like that, change directions, and then hop to get to a hop step in traffic, I mean, that's tough. 32, one off his season high. 67, 55, 528 to play. There's Ron Sr. into five-time NBA champ. Tremendous career. He's, he's got to be pretty proud right now. Oh my goodness. Yeah, one son in the NBA after a tremendous career at Rutgers. Saw a lot of Scarlet Knight fans out here tonight. Steve Pike, the head coach, is here. Assistant coach Brandon Knight is here. Rutgers has won five in a row. Just beat number one Purdue the other night. Got another win last night. Yes, sir. Everything working right now with the Scarlet Knights, and they're trying to perhaps get a couple more recruits out here, including Dylan. Shout out to Brandon Knight, man. He's doing an unbelievable job over there. Him and his brother, uh, big brother, brother. They really set it up the right way over there. See them all prepping. 
They're just amazing players. Glad you mentioned that. Camden, six of six in this quarter, two of five for Don Bosco. Isaiah Brown misfires on a three. To that point, I was in Pittsburgh doing television when Brandon had his playing career. You want to talk about unbelievable environments in the Peterson Event Center when they had Julius Page and Siobhan Troutman. I mean, they had dudes on Terry Olay. And Brandon Knight had a tremendous college career at Pitt. Yeah, he definitely did. He, he was a leader. He was a leader on that team, I believe. Like, he was like one of those dudes who's a hardest to a communicator. Obviously, that's the point, point guard job most of the time, but that's a tough weight to carry on your shoulders, and they did it with pride. One of those where you could tell he had a future in coaching if he wanted to do it. Now he's obviously got a great position on Steve Peichel's staff at Rutgers. Yeah. Shot down, they needed that from Cabral. Timeout, 420 to play. 71-58. So Don Bosco had to have that from Cabral. I'm a little bit shocked how quickly this is become Camden's game now to lose. There is the head coach of Rutgers, Steve Peichel. The job he has done with that program has been incredible since he got on campus. I tell you, man, if he if he had the older brother and he has an opportunity to get this younger one, he's in a great seat over there at Rutgers, let me tell you. He's looking at his chops if he can get this kid. Just beat number one Purdue earlier in the week. Then last night, Owen over Maryland. They've won five straight. They've got Iowa and Northwestern next. Next two games, very winnable games. So it wouldn't be a shock at all if they run this to seven or more wins in a row and get back in the rankings and, and make more noise. But I mean, that obviously a program that has had rough times. And yeah. since he got on campus, he has completely turned the narrative. Yeah, it's, it's uh, really satisfying to be a Jersey guy and to see Rutgers basketball really doing well. Rutgers basketball, Rutgers football, like, you know, for a long time, they weren't as the, you know, as good as the academics at the school and how big the school was. We always thought, especially with the talent we have, we always thought Rutgers would be such a bigger pro basketball program for sure. And every every chance we got, where somebody like myself, they always we always went to the Carolinas, the Dukes, and ran out of here. And it, we always talked about, you know, growing up, if so many of us would have just stayed in New Jersey, went to a Rutgers or Seton Hall. Where would, the, where would their programs be? Great point. No, it's well. And how about just down the road, Jersey City, St. Peter's. St. Peter's to the Elite Eight last year. Yes, I sir. mean it's just Shaheen. Shaheen Alloy now, Seton Hall. And they've taken a few bumps, but he, you know he's going to have success there. You know it's 100 percent, 100 percent. I think it's just a matter of time before he gets the guys he needs in there. Yep, that's it. Off the bounce, Wagner again finishes. That's a tough angle too. Floater off the glass with a big stepping up. Tough angle. Great move. Dylan Harper against three defenders, fouled on the way in. Dylan is not giving up. No. One point off his career high. That's it. Wagner at this end. There's dad, huh? There's dad. Dad was, whew, dad was a problem. Dad was the reason I wore 21 in my last show with the Lakers. Is that right? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, got a championship in that number too. Him and Dion, those were my guys. That's awesome. Played for one year at Memphis and went to the NBA. And again, some health issues cut his NBA career short, but a legend, especially in these parts. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and it's, un it's so unfortunate. Obviously, it's unfortunate because of the great pass, great order. Obviously, it's unfortunate because, you know, the health issues and stuff like that. But how, uh, just think about it, him and LeBron being in Cleveland together. Like, and he was the first two before Kyrie, you That's know? Right. Like, that was That's like, right. oh my goodness. Still ended up having a really nice career. And then, of course, as we've alluded to, Milt Wagner, the grandfather of DJ here. National titles in high school, college, the NBA title as well. Won the collegiate title at Louisville in 86. Three Final Fours at Louisville, and then one at the Lakers in 88. There's an and one. They are not going away with 3.04 left. He's on the mission. He's trying to get 40. If we're going to lose, I'm going to get 40. 
He's at 35 now after that season high. So good patience. You got Bradshaw. Bradshaw got the dunk there, but he just fouled out on that last sequence. So Bradshaw on the bench. I mean, fortunately, he came in and, and made a, a tremendous impact when he did. But it, I mean, had they played with another team of size, they really would have been in trouble, I think. Fouls out with 16. Really, really good talent, though. Top five guy going to Kentucky. Along with his teammate, T.J. White. Jalen Hornsby is out there for Camden, wearing number 11 as well. He's getting looks for college football as a wide receiver as Medley couldn't finish. Back up in a foul, but Hornsby got the likes of Tennessee and Georgia wanting him to play wide receiver for him in the future. So, I mean, they got stars everywhere. I mean, you see his body, his body and his structure, the way he's built. He looks like a football guy. A lot of speed. 75-64. Shot wouldn't go. 248 left. I'm proud to say my Lakewood Pinders beat Camden in, in football for Group 3 state championship my junior year. So is that right? That's my only time I ever beat Camden. There you go. Well, yeah, they, the staff was giving you the business down there, weren't they? Yeah, they were trying to give you the business because they beat my cousin and they thought I was on that team. <laughs> they did. And you, and you, I like how you made it clear. Once the competitor, always the co you're not just going to allow them to say that. Oh, be like, no. Yeah. no, not, not with dudes from Jersey. They go, if you allow it, they're going to ride you forever. You're going to be there. 76 64 239 left. Yeah, we talk, talked about family affairs all night. How about that? I know it was a short time, but when you got the opportunity to play with your brother yeah. for the Knicks, that was pretty cool. Oh, it was amazing. To, have, to be able to share that, our dream, to be on the same team, you know, uh, live that lifestyle of uh, NBA brothers on the same team. It was uh, one of the greatest things I've, that have happened to, I think, my family, you know. To, for my parents to be able to catch the train up, go to the garden, and just watch the game and stuff like that, see his plays. It, it was really dope. That was cool. 20, 2013, correct? Yeah. Medley, by the way, foul there. That is fourth. So, 10 point game. To see if there's one final run for Don Bosco with 2.39 left as the aforementioned Hornsby goes to the bench. Full court pressure comes here. Camden's got a few kids that look like they play football. Yeah. Corner three, the Sear Haskins spins out. Fighting for the rebound, Bailey Richmond fouled on the way up. I like his aggression when he goes for a rebound. He tries to get every ball. It's not like he's going, you know, 50%. He's trying to go 100%, snatch the rebound, put it back in, let's go. Saw a shot there of Kevin DeVario, 28 seasons as the head man at Don Bosco. Won state titles in 17 as well as 18. He's in the Drew University Hall of Fame in, uh, in Madison, New Jersey. 431 career assists. And he held that record until 2020. He's also in the New Jersey State Coaches Association Hall of Fame. So he's had a tremendous coaching career after his playing career. Double Hall of Fame. Man, pretty impressive. His team <laughs> is 9 0 coming into the night, trying to go 10 0, but down 12 with 220 left after building a huge first half lead. Knocked away. What a play. Cornelius Robinson fouled by Harper. I'm just going to say, I don't think that was a foul. I thought it looked like a good block. Fair enough. Robinson hard to the floor, comes over the smile. When you're talking oh. superstars these days, and you didn't have the opportunity, but talking NIL deals has changed everything completely, huh? Oh, man. And it's, an, it, it's incredible. Um, I think it's, it should have happened a long time ago, but it's going to be interesting how they you know, how you police it, like how you make sure it's the right situation for kids and in schools and, and as a whole, you know, because we don't want to lose any other, pro any programs behind it. We just want the kids to be able to benefit and take care of themselves and their families. I saw Bronny James 
At about seven million, with what he's making off his deals. Yeah. He's getting pretty good he's, stuff. He's making more than some yeah. programs. That family's doing all right financially, I'd say. Yeah, pretty good. Locked inside by Richmond. They are doing pretty well. Richmond's been really active, and I talked about some of the offers and interest he's getting as a 6 7 win. There's a foul, 152 left. 13 point Camden advantage. Trying to get to eight and one, and for them, bouncing back from their first loss of the year. I mentioned Wednesday in Miami, Florida, they got beat by Columbus High School, 75-66. It's amazing how, you know, public schools travel nowadays. You know, before it was like just prep schools, or the Catholic League schools. Now we got prep schools going across country playing games. It's, uh, I'd love to see that. Yeah. Camden won the state title last year, ending a 22 year drought. Overall, though, obviously, great tradition with this program 12 state titles in the history of the program. This will be a huge program win tonight. 148 left of 15. Dylan Harper, no. And now Camden can. Start to taste this thing. That's impressive. If I'm not mistaken, I believe DeWan won his junior year as well. So both of them. I think you're it. right. They both won the TLCs as, as juniors. Sian Medley blocked by Harper. There's the guy still playing hard. For sure. This kid, he is so talented. Setting the tone. Blocked to this end as Brown went strong. He just tried to block it on this side and still blocked it on the other side with the other hand. That's talent. Yeah. <laughs> and the activity and the ability to get up for these players as fans start to head to the exits, but they were treated to an unbelievable night here in New Jersey. Another takeaway, Camden got numbers, Medley, good move back here. Throws it down. That's what they came to see. Unfortunately, they leave him out when they see it, but that's what they came to see. They were down big early. They fought all the way back, trailed by eight at halftime, and here they are with under a minute to play, up by 17. I didn't see this kind of turn. Not saying I didn't think they could come back and win the game, but I didn't see it being this kind of a turnaround. Yeah, I kind of figured once. I mean, when you look at the size, rebounding is everything, man. Because everybody, I mean, they're going to shoot a, a low percentage. So if you can get offensive rebounds, second chance points, and especially high school basketball, it's going to be it's going to be tough. And I didn't obviously I didn't think Bradshaw was going to foul out or be a foul trouble the whole game. But when you see their size and their abilities, I mean, it's going to be tough to beat a team like him. Again, no shot clock, so they can run this thing out. Ironman putting some pressure on, but now 30 seconds in a 17-point game. That's going to do it, and Camden is going to bounce back from the first loss and get to 8-1 on the year. And Don Bosco came in right 13th in the nation, 9-0. They will suffer their first setback of the year. This is a big W for them. They wanted this game. They wanted to come back and, and set the precedent of, you know, Camden basketball. Don Bosco led by as many as 14 in the first half. Take away and a finish at the buzzer. 83 68 will be the final. So again, Don Bosco led by 14, but in the end, it's a 15 point win for Camden. Yeah, I don't Huge think Dwyer was happy about that. <laughs> no, I don't either. They were dribbling that thing out. 15 point win, Camden. Despite a season high 36 for Dylan Harper, but 16 for Aaron Bradshaw. 18 for Sion Medley and 20 for the star coming in DJ Wagner number one recruit in the nation headed to Kentucky as advertised not Brent Stover J.R. Smith former McDonald's All-American yourself you know all about playing at this level and we saw huge star power and just because the matchup is there on paper doesn't mean it's going to deliver 
This one delivered and then some tonight. Yeah, 100%. I mean, Kevin got off to a really slow start with the first half. They couldn't really get it lit off the basket. And then in the second half, they just start blowing the doors off. Big man got really active on the offensive rebounds. They started finishing at the basket. I felt like DJ felt way more comfortable in the second half. Um, and they stopped. They, they closed out to the three-point line. They stopped getting, letting guys just shoot wide open shots, and they did the job. 15-point win after trailing by 14. Wagner was the star coming in, but Medley, Bradshaw, he's got some support around him. And you talked about Bradshaw throughout the night, seven-footer, headed to Kentucky as well. With a nice game, runs like a gazelle, can shoot from outside. I mean, if he puts on some weight as you look at these final stats, 49% Panthers, 43% Ironmen. But talking about Bradshaw, I mean, this guy could be an NBA prospect, no doubt about it. Oh, 100%. I mean, just off his size and the way he runs the floor alone, uh, let alone if he puts weight on and strengthens up, he's definitely got, he definitely has what it takes to get to the league. It's a matter of continuously putting forth the effort. So 83 to 68 is the final. Camden ranked number four in the country. Harper and Wagner exchanging pleasantries. Final thoughts on what we saw out here tonight on, on Showtime Basketball? Man, I'll tell you one thing, that kid Dylan Harper is definitely, if he's top five, he's not five, he's not four, he's sure enough ain't three. <laughs> I, I got to see the other guys in front of him. On the campus of Kane University, he is J.R. Smith. I'm Brent Stilber. We have had a blast here tonight, part of the Iverson Classic and this growing partnership with Showtime. That concludes our show, and, and what a night it was here in New Jersey. J.R. Smith and our entire crew, I'm Brent Stilber. It's been a presentation of Showtime Networks. Follow Show Basketball on all social media channels for great coverage of the sport. Good night from Union, New Jersey. Camden wins 83-68.